we will continue with our discussions on uh, compressible flows. Uh, we will now discuss on something known as stagnation properties. This term stagnation we have come across uh, during our earlier topics that we have covered in fluid mechanics and uh, one of the literal meanings is that the fluid is brought to rest at a point so that the velocity is 0. So, stagnation point is a point where the velocity of flow is 0, but that does not mean that it suffices the requirement of descri description of stagnation properties. So, we will now look into more deeply about some of the important properties which dictate the nature of the process by which the stagnation state is achieved. To do that, we will refer to first an important thermodynamic property and uh, when we are referring to a thermodynamic property, we will be basically referring to the first law of thermodynamics to specify that. So, if we uh, say that you have a control volume, say some control volume which has some inlet I and some exit E. Let us say that there is some rate of heat transfer to the control volume say Q dot C V and say some rate of work done by the control volume as W dot C V and let us say that the flow is steady. and the state or the properties of fluid within the control volume is steady. That means, the properties within the control volume do not change with time. So, if these two condi conditions are simultaneously achieved, then the corresponding form of the first law of thermodynamics is like this. where H is the property enthalpy which is the internal energy plus pressure by the density. <coughs> now, uh, this particular form is also known as a steady flow energy equation just, uh, just for common understanding. So, this is nothing but the first law of thermodynamics expressed for a flow process across a control volume when the flow is steady and the states within the control volume are also steady. Not only that, there are certain more important assumptions. What are the important assumptions? All the properties at the inlet and the exit are uniform. That means, the velocity profiles are uniform, the thermodynamic properties like enthalpy those are uniform. So, it is like approximately a one dimensional representation where uniform properties across the cross section for the inlet and the outlet. Now, we are interested to apply this equation for compressible flows. So, when we apply this equation for compressible flows, first of all uh, if you have a system where you are not having any mechanism of extracting work from that. So, then this rate of work done will be 0 by the control volume. Then if what kind of process we are considering? We are considering an adiabatic process. So, if it is an adiabatic process that means heat transfer across the control volume is 0. We are not committing whether it is reversible or irreversible. So, the reversibility or irreversibility features when we talk about the second law of thermodynamics when we discuss about that, but in the first law of thermodynamics it is just good enough to say whether it is adiabatic or not irreversible or irreversible does not feature here. Now, in most of the high speed gas flows, the effects of the, th the thermal effects and the kinetic energy effects are more important than the changes in potential energy. So, that is negligible and therefore, you are left with H i plus U i square by 2 is equal to H e plus U e square by 2. Okay. 
Now let us say that we are thinking about two sections instead of I and E some generic section where the pro, where the enthalpy this is specific enthalpy that is enthalpy per unit mass is H the velocity is u this is at some section and when you go to some another section that section is a special section when the velocity is brought to 0. So, this is a section of stagnation. So, we are interested to see that what is the corresponding enthalpy there and let us say that the name of enthalpy at that stagnation section is H0. Since it is a one dimensional treatment section and point are the same because it is basically uniform. So, we can say from here that H plus u square by 2 is equal to H0 because at the stagnation u equal to 0. So, this H0 is known as stagnation enthalpy. For an ideal gas, it is known that dH equal to Cp dt, this is for an ideal gas. Where Cp is a function of temperature in general, but when we talk about a perfect gas, Cp is a constant. So, if we say perfect gas, this is a constant for perfect gas. Therefore, we may say H minus H0 for a perfect gas is Cp into T minus T0, where T0 is the temperature corresponding to this stagnation enthalpy, this is known as stagnation temperature. Why we refer to the temperature? Because temperature is a directly measurable quantity from experiments. So, it is important that we refer to that. So, this is known as stagnation temperature. So, we can write C p into T minus T 0 plus u square by 2 equal to 0. Okay. Now, we may write C p in terms of r and gamma because just recall that C p minus C v is equal to r and C p by C v is equal to gamma. Okay. So, you can write C p into 1 minus 1 by gamma equal to r that means C p is equal to gamma r by gamma minus 1. So, we can write T 0 minus T in place of C p we write gamma r by gamma minus 1 is equal to u square by 2 u square by 2 is what? You can write u by c is equal to the Mach number say m. So, u square is equal to m square into c square. Now, what will be the expression for c will depend on the nature of the process. If it is an isentropic flow, c square is gamma r t. So, this is equal to m square gamma r t for isentropic flow. See till now whenever we define the stagnation temperature, so the stagnation temperature how it is defined? The stagnation temperature is defined from this equation as T0 is equal to T plus u square by 2 C p right. This definition does not require the process to be reversible. So, if you want to find out that what is the stagnation temperature, in fact this definition does not require any process because it is just an expression. So, if you know the temperature and velocity at a point and specific heat at a point, you know the stagnation temperature at a point. So, stagnation temperature is defined at a point irrespective of what is uh, I mean what kind of state is there at that point. If you want to physically achieve a stagnation temperature, you have to bring the process to rest at a point in an adiabatic manner, it need not be reversible that is not necessary because the definition followed from the first law of thermodynamics by setting heat transfer equal to 0 
without imposing any condition of reversible process. Okay. So, keep one thing in mind stagnation temperature just like any stagnation property is a property. So, it, it does not mean that at one point if it is not a stagnation point it will not have a stagnation temperature, it will have a stagnation temperature because it is just de dependent on the local temperature velocity and Cp. So, it is just like a combination of properties and therefore, it is a property. If you say that I want to physically achieve the property then you have to follow this type this kind of a process adiabatic process. Now, if you want to use this expression u square equal to m square into gamma r t that means, you are now imposing the additional constraint that it is an isentropic process that means, it is a reversible process. So, for an isentropic process this will be m square gamma r t by 2. So, from this what follows is <coughs> So, gamma into r will cancel from both sides. So, you will get T 0 by T is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square right. So, this is the relationship between the stagnation temperature and the temperature at a point. What are the assumptions under which this is valid? it is an isentropic process that you have to keep in mind. Otherwise, the more general expression is this one. Now, you may relate the stagnation just like stagnation temperature you may have a stagnation pressure and stagnation <coughs> density. So, those properties also you may find out. So, for an isentropic flow for isentropic process you have P v to the power gamma equal to constant uh, that means basically in terms of T and P you can write T 2 by T 1 is equal to P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. So, just like you have related the stagnation temperature similarly you can re relate stagnation pressure P 0 by P is equal to T 0 by T to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 that means 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 ok. This is this P 0 is stagnation pressure. Remember assumption again is isentropic flow. Now, so, this considers compressibility. We have earlier seen a case where we used Bernoulli's equation to define a stagnation pressure and that was without consideration of any compressibility. So, we used just the Bernoulli's equation, Bernoulli's equation means it is an incompressible flow assumption and the stagnation pressure. So, if you consider the incompressible limit. P 0 is equal to P plus half rho u square neglecting the potential energy effect. What are the assumptions? It is an incompressible flow. We use the Bernoulli's equation that means we implicitly assume that it is a frictionless flow. So, if you want to achieve physically this P 0 you have to bring the fluid to rest in a reversible and adiabatic process that will mean that it is a frictionless process. If you want to achieve T 0 physically you have to bring the fluid to rest in an adiabatic process it need not be reversible. Whereas, to achieve P 0 physically you have to bring it to rest by ensuring both that it is reversible as well as adiabatic. This is a very important distinction between like how you achieve physically a stagnation pressure and a stagnation temperature. So, now when you come to this incompressible flow, so here you can write P 0 by P for an ideal gas P by rho is R t. So, this is 1 plus half u square by R t. 
remember that if it is an isentropic flow c square is gamma r t. So, this you can write 1 plus gamma by 2 u square by c square u square by c square is m square. Okay. So, this is an expression which is which is valid for incompressible flow, this is an expression that is valid for compressible flow. It may be interesting to see that in a certain approximate limit these two equations in certain approximation they agree with each other. To do that what we may do this is a more general expression, so we may expand this in a binomial theorem just like 1 plus x to the power of n. So, if we expand that in a binomial theorem. So, P0 by P compressible. So, 1 plus x to the power n is like 1 plus n x plus <coughs> n into n minus 1. by factorial 2 into x square plus <coughs> let us just write another term n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 by factorial 3 into x cube like that. So, this is 1 plus gamma by 2 m square. So, you can see that up to the first term it is just like the incompressible flow expression. The remaining terms are the corrections because of the compressibility effect. So, what are the corrections? So, you can write maybe the first two corrections. So, one is gamma minus, so this is <coughs> gamma by <coughs> Eight M four, right? Then plus <coughs> this is two plus gamma into gamma by forty eight m to the power 6 like that sorry 2 minus gamma right. So, what is its important implication say you are using a Peter tube to measure the flow velocity at a point and you are negligent of the compressibility effect and you are using this expression for p 0 by p because in a Peter tube you may get the difference between stagnation and static pressure by connecting a manometer between the stagnation point and another point which is a point located upstream to that. So, when you get that expression, that expression will require a correction and the leading order terms that will dictate the correction the first two leading order terms are like this. So, if it has to have a compressibility effect, these extra terms for correction need to be invoked and we can see this these terms are higher powers of m. So, as m becomes smaller and smaller this becomes more and more irrelevant that means for low values of Mach number the compressibility effects are smaller and smaller that, that is quite intuitive. Okay. 